As humans, our sense of smell is extremely powerful. If you're trying to attract somebody, having the right fragrance can elevate your appearance to a whole new level. At the same time, that fragrance will create a memory that will last a lifetime. In this video, I'm going to go over five hacks to get the most out of your fragrances. Let's go. Fellas, welcome back. It's Robert, your everyday gentleman. And like I said, today I'm going over five hacks to get the most out of your fragrances. Now, I've had a recent jump in my subscribers. And though I wasn't a massive jump per se, just the fact that I'm getting anybody to subscribe to the channel is truly humbling. And I appreciate all of your support. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, here in this channel, I talk about a number of things to do with men's lifestyle. Things like fragrances, fashion, cigars, whiskey, grooming. Um, I'm even gonna be doing, like I've said before, some DIY stuff, honeydew list stuff. So I invite you to subscribe down below and become part of the community. Now let's jump into these hacks. Hack number one is making sure your skin is moisturized. Now I know you've heard from me also to make sure that you're applying lotion or some kind of moisturizer onto your skin to make sure that you have a good base for that fragrance to attach itself to. But outside of that, you have to make sure that your body is properly hydrated. Now, I'm not gonna go into all of the benefits that you get from drinking water, There's, but one of the benefits that you get from drinking plenty of water is having naturally moisturized, healthy skin. And like I said, having that healthy skin creates a nice base for that fragrance to attach itself to. If you have a nice base and you have something that the, the scent isn't just gonna soak into and disappear, then it's gonna make that fragrance last longer. Now I myself, I like to drink between three liters to a gallon of water. And I'm not saying that's exactly what you need to drink, but making an effort to drink pretty close to that amount is gonna give you a number of benefits. Hack number two, I'm sure you've heard, apply the fragrance to your pulse points. Those pulse points are areas where the veins are closer to the surface of your skin, and that creates more heat, more blood flow, which helps to get that fragrance out into the air and project it out which is a great idea and that's something that I do. But one of the things that I've started doing that I've seen make a difference in the longevity of my fragrances is also applying it to areas that aren't my pulse points or areas that are a little bit colder. The reason I've started doing that is when you apply to your pulse points, you're getting that higher body heat and that's helping to you know project that fragrance and get it out into the air. But at the same time, that heat is gonna kill that fragrance a little bit quicker. So if you're applying, for example, here to the inside of your wrist, which is one of the pulse points, then one thing I do is apply to the back of my hand or to my actual forearm, which is a little bit cooler because it's not your actual pulse points. Having the fragrance on areas a little bit cooler, it may not project as much initially, but it is going to allow for that fragrance to last a little bit longer on your skin otherwise. Now, there's another reason why I do the back of my hand and my, and my forearm, and that's with hack number three. Hack number three, apply the fragrance to the back of your hand. Now that's not the only place that I apply fragrances to. I also apply to my neck and to my head, sometimes my shoulders. But the problem is this, fragrances and scents rise. Now I'm six foot one, so that fragrance is already six feet up in the air. Unless there's something moving it around in the area, it's probably just gonna continue to rise and disappear. So what I've started doing is applying it to my hands. Now this is good because it's a little bit lower on your body, but on top of that, the other reason I like putting it on this area is because if you're moving around and you can tell that I move my hands a lot when I'm talking, if you're having a conversation with somebody, even if you're just going to shake their hand, starting to move that fragrance around your person. And it's not just emanating off of you, uh, you're spreading what is your scent bubble. The scent bubble is you know, the area around you that, that the fragrance is able to be smelled. If you're moving your hands around, you're spreading that scent around uh, into a larger bubble. And if you're trying to attract somebody, for example, sending the fragrance out gives a chance that they might catch a little whiff and might want to come in a little bit closer to get a better feel of what it is that you're wearing. And obviously, if they start getting closer to you, you can take it from there. Hack number four, sample fragrances. Do not blind buy, but there's a certain way you gotta go about sampling fragrances. Now, I'm sure you've been to a department store and you've been bombarded by a number of sales reps that are like, here, smell this, here, smell this, here, smell this, and it's like, take it easy. What you're gonna wanna do is get a sample of that fragrance, try to make sure that it's a fresh spray. What I've been noticing as I've been going out to department stores is that they'll stack 
a number of these little fragrance cards and spray them all with this fragrance and then you're just kind of holding on to them as you're passing them around. Now what's going to happen is depending on when they actually sprayed it, you're not going to get the full experience of that fragrance. You're going to miss out most likely on the opening or the top notes. But make sure you get a fresh spray on that card. And if you can, spray it on your person so you can get a good idea of how that fragrance is going to interact with your chemistry. Now on top of that, you don't want to buy based on that initial reaction that you get from smelling it. All you're smelling there is the opening. What I recommend and what I do is walk around while I'm continuing to do my shopping or whatever it is, I'll, I'll, or even take it home with me if I'm done for the day. But you don't want to buy just based off that initial smell you get off of there. That initial smell, which is the top notes, which is the opening, is going to last maybe 20, 30 minutes. And then you're going to get into the base notes or the, the majority of the scent when it dries down. This is what people call the dry down. This is what's going to last you, depending on the fragrance, a few hours. Kind of varies depending on what actual fragrance it is and the concentration. But this is mostly what you're going to be smelling throughout the life of the fragrance on you. So you want to get a good feel of what the total experience of that fragrance is. So make sure you're not buying right away. Walk around like I said, get a good feel for it. If you can, get a little sample bottle. There's a number of stores out there like Sephora, Nordstrom, that'll give you a sample bottle for free. So you can take it with you and get a good feel, give it a little test run before you actually buy a bottle. Hack number five, carry the scents with you. Now we're starting to get into the warmer months here in California. It's May now and it's still not extremely hot, but summer is right around the corner. And that means our freshies are coming out and these are notorious for not having the longevity that you get with maybe some of the heavier, darker fragrances that you wear in the colder months, like in the winter. There's just really no way around it. You can do whatever you can to get the most performance out of these that you can, but some of them are just gonna die out within two or three hours. One thing I do is carry the scent with you and reapply it as needed. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do it. The way I primarily do it is I get one of these little decants. These you can get online on Amazon. I like these little twist up ones. There's different ones you could do where you pull the cap off. Uh, but these little twist up ones are cool. I just like the fact that you could twist it up. But you take these and you fill them up with whatever scent you want on the inside. I'll also put a label as a brand new one. I haven't used it yet, but these are very cheap. I think you get these for like four or five, six bucks, kind of depending on how many you're buying. But very cheap, very easy to carry. These fit nicely in your pocket or in a backpack. Now, if decanting is something that you really don't want to do, but you still want to be able to reapply that fragrance a little bit later, one hack that I've tried that has worked is to take a few Q-tips and apply that fragrance onto that and then put these Q-tips into a Ziploc. Applying the fragrance on here, the fragrance is gonna be soaked up into the cotton tips of the Q-tip and then putting it into the Ziploc is gonna keep that fragrance from evaporating if you just have it kind of free and out into the open. And then once your fragrance dies down or you feel the need to reapply, you take one of these and apply it to wherever it is that you typically apply your fragrance. Now I know you are rubbing the fragrance onto your skin, which is also a no-no, but this is better than nothing. Now before I get into the bonus, I wanna say if you've enjoyed this video so far, make sure you hit that like button down below. It lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it helps the channel to grow. It helps to spread this video and other videos from my channel amongst other people that aren't already a subscriber. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. I'll really appreciate it. Now for my bonus hack, really has nothing to do with the performance of the fragrance. More so, it's a cost saver. Buying fragrances can be extremely expensive. Whether you're buying designer or niche, they aren't cheap. So what I do and what I recommend, avoid buying retail. Now, it's not always possible to do that. If you have a brand new scent that's out, it may not be available at a discounted rate. And if you can't wait for it to get discounted, then by all means, pay full price. But if it's an old fragrance, a fragrance that's been around for a while, um, or you're willing to wait for it to get discounted, what I usually do is buy online. There's a number of reputable fragrance discounter websites that you can buy fragrances for a huge, huge discount. I'll link a couple of them down below, but if you can at all avoid it, avoid paying retail. You'll get some great deals and you'll be able to stretch your fragrance dollars a little bit more. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Also comment down below and let me know 
what are the fragrance hacks that you use to get the most out of your fragrances. Also remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below to make sure you catch all future videos from this channel. And remember, being a gentleman is an everyday thing. Till next time, fellas.